welcome to Pack of Valham and another pack collection video. It is time to walk down memory lane. I will explain the jokes and shenanigans of I Belove to Lie, which is a series where it's been a lot of fun to look like an idiot. The basic concept of I Belove to Lie is that I watch an episode of the The Trolled series by DGR, and I make predictions about it. For each wrong prediction, I eat a bean boozled jelly bean. Er, I, for each wrong prediction, I eat a bean boozled jelly bean. A joke or shenanigan is anything that I find to really make the series priceless, which encouraged me to make. I Belof to Lie Season 2, filled with even more jokes and shenanigans. It could be a little joke that I made, clever editing that I did, something funny in the background, or something that is completely irrelevant to the basic concept of I Belove to Lie. There are many such types of jokes and shenanigans in DGR's videos and live streams, but they will not be included here if I did not add anything significant of my own to them. I will show the After Black things in their own video. If you want to control some of my shenanigans for I Belove to Lie Season 3 and possibly beyond if I decide to do so, submit a response to my iSwitches form. If anybody has submitted any responses, you can see them in my iSwitches spreadsheet. Next 16 files, we have... I belong to lie. Something. What's this one? Oh, there we go. Level fears two. I belong to lie. Level oh, fears. I belong to lie. Level fears two. Oh, look at that! Not only are these titles nearly identical, the links are the same. Does DGR Dave or his, or his editor Chris know about that coincidence? Same duration, not just the title being almost identical. I belong to lie. Level fears E two. So. Now we can look. I can make it look like Ryan's head banging. Five twenty-eight twenty twenty. Three twenty-six fifty-one p.m. Set it up. I see nine. Skip ahead. That voice. What is it saying? Right there, we, I can edit that and try to figure out what it's saying. I belong to lie level fears E3. Okay, so where's the cord for this thing so that I can connect it to the computer? I belong to lie level fears I3. Well, if E's for ending, I must be intro. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Pack Valham and another part of this episode of the uh, I Belove to Lie series. Red dot. Okay, oh yeah, you can see it now. Red dot there. I've not noticed that before. I Belove to Lie level fears three. Oh, I see. 
series. A series. Western Saloon. Incompetech. Royalty free music. Relaxing chill. Music genres. Lounge relax. So listen to some lounge. Alright, this was an after black thing, so. They all think of. But I have to include this quote. When I think of lounge music, relaxing music, I don't think of a western saloon. I blow off the light, anti anti I won. This video was uploaded last Saturday and it's Wednesday now and this video is over. Catch you guys later. I will off to lie anti anti one. I'm back. I just dive right in. I back. I barely caught anything. Oh wait, that was a different episode. Yeah. I will off to lie anti anti e one. That is not gonna not wrap up. I think there's not, not too much negatives, double negatives, whatever. 6 3 p.m. The fidget spinner's green. What would happen if I spun it and used it as a green screen? Anti anti er I have to lie, anti anti E two. What if we took an almond joy and removed the almond and replaced the coconut with peanut butter? Hmm. Somebody should make that. I wonder what that would be like. It, would that not be? Susan. What would that not be like? A P Reese's peanut butter egg. Almond Joy without the almond replaced the coconut with peanut butter. Now that is the oven. I need to get the dessert out of the oven. In case you're curious, it is strawberry rhubarb crisp. Now that one time somewhere in... The first season of I Belove to Lie, I mentioned I had fruit with my dessert. I don't remember what that dessert was. Maybe it was strawberry rhubarb crisp. Maybe some, something different. Let's see. I Belove to Lie, anti anti two. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Pack of Our Ham and another part of this episode of the I Belove to Lie. Six five twenty twenty nine fifty four twenty eight p.m. Hey, you know how you can count beats of songs, like all the songs playing at like one. Somewhere between then and when I did season two, I found out. Oh wait, those aren't technically songs; those are pieces of music. Two, three, four, one. Not sure why I didn't actually put the music I referred to on the screen here. It was a two set video, two set violin. Somebody said it was referred to a song of like maybe Mozart or some other composer. And Eddie, I think it was Eddie, corrected and said, peace. So, and then I'm like, 
Oh, there is the distinction between song and piece and... Yeah, but back then, even in, in 2020, I... Called them songs. Or maybe compositions. I don't know. I but left a lie. Anti, anti, three. Oh, yeah. Can I find where I said moo on here? Can I salvage that where I said moo? And what, I'm gonna pause the re screen recording and resume when I find it, if I find it. Or if I decide to move on without finding it. I eat a lawn clippings bean, cow's eat grass, right? So should I eat it like a cow? Episode 4, Left Me, Part 1, Yellow Predictions. To make it clearer what's going on, the editor, hey, that's me. Yeah, editor, you're going to need to do some more work. Why, wow, more work? Are you going to pay me anymore? I don't pay you at all. Okay, what do I have to do? Okay. I had thought of a good idea, and I went back and forth pretending to talk to editor me about it. Previously, people may or may not have understood all or most of my predictions. So, from the Left Me episode, through the rest of Season 1, predictions appear on the screen in yellow. If a prediction turns out to be correct, it turns green. If a prediction turns out to be wrong, it turns red. In Season 2, I typed all of my predictions in a spreadsheet, which you can access by the link in the description. When reviewing Season 1, I found out that part of the fun in making this series is the yellow predictions, so I will go back to that when, not if, I do Season 3. When means it'll happen at some point, at some time, but if means it could or could not happen, so when is certain. If is conditional. Spinner fell out. When we find out if I'm right or not, it'll turn red if I'm wrong. And I'll eat one of these for it. The no longer needed spinner just fell out. If I'm correct, it'll turn green. This is another one of those very simple things that A notification popped up and blocked some of the text. I will reread it from the beginning. This is another one of those very simple things that I'm not entirely sure I want to point out here, but I am pointing it out. I held up the box to show you that I would eat one of those beans if a yellow prediction turns red, and that caused the no longer needed spinner to fall out. Noise one. It's gonna be making me look like an idiot. Today it's called Noise Cream Sandwich Trolls. <laughs> well, I don't find that title funny. Noise Cream Sandwich. Uh, just had a craving for them, okay? One time when I was younger, I kind of had a craving for them. I think, sort of, I don't know, that was, I don't even know how many years ago, anyway. Okay. 
I found the title funnier than it should have been. I want to believe that it wasn't much of a craving. I think there was a time that I saw them somewhere, and I just wanted one. I had eaten a few in my life before that point. This was a, this was too long ago for me to remember any significant detail about it. X pronunciations. Hmm. How many different ways in English can X be pronounced? Editor, if you can find, oh no, more work for me to do? If you find any more, if you can find many different ways that X is pronounced, list them on the screen. Different words where X is pronounced different ways. Dave did not know how to pronounce ways in English. Dave did not know how to pronounce Zara's name. Editor me found 11 ways to pronounce X. Actually, for one of them, X isn't pronounced. So is that technically 10 plus 1 instance of it being silent? I will read all of the words that I found. X is pronounced z in xylo. X is pronounced g in exam. X is pronounced x in box. X is pronounced in fo. X is pronounced x in x radiation. X is pronounced cross in crossing. X is pronounced sh in she mao. X is pronounced Chris in Christmas. X is pronounced trance in transfer. X is pronounced trans in transmit. And X is pronounced s in su. Silent X's. I wonder if there are any silent X's. As always. I did find a silent X while editing. Fo flashed on the screen. While recording, I had forgotten that word. Didn't chew well. Did not chew that skunk bean very well. The thing I want to point out here is that the text is black, the same color as the bean I ate, similar to what I had done when I realized in Actual Good Part 1 that I ate a juicy pear that time and the previous ones were boogers. Which wristwatch is the Swiss wristwatch? This piece, this is the one that he wants to hit. He's gonna try the. I'm not sure about the other box, so. I didn't even say that tongue twister in the video, but my tongue got twisted while trying to say that the right piece switch is correct. I put r slash I had a stroke on the screen. I had a stroke is the name of a subreddit that shares times people tried to type something 
typically text messages, but they kept messing up. This time, it happened in my speech. Old College Days, Part A. Yes, not this is old college days. I thought the piece was correct. I didn't think about going to... Uh, I thought the piece was correct. Right one. Last scene, I guess, another skunk. Dave sometimes says something like, I haven't done that since my old college days, as a recurring joke. Fun fact, did you know that if you are wearing a Goomba helmet and you walk while crouching, you walk at the same speed as a Goomba? Old College Days, Part B Oh, you didn't make the college joke video. Yeah. Old college day joke that time. Oh, what am I saying? Um. By the way, when I pause the screen recording, I am not cheating. I do not skip ahead. I just pause so that I can look and evaluate without boring you. Or I'm taking this item. I thought Dave would make the old college days joke that time, but he didn't. I tried, but kind of failed to say that video. I tried to say that, but kind of failed. Oh, what am I saying? Old College Days, Part C. This is just brilliant. The old up and over. Haven't done the old up and over. <laughs> ah, there's that, do. Uh, college days joke. I'm just kidding. Okay, for this part... Kidding? Have heard that before. I really thought Dave was saying it that time, but instead he said he was just kidding. I did not see the bird clock coming. Did not see that coming. Did not see that coming. Oh, did that push him into this area? Or he jumped into this area? Ah, you have to go into this area to die. Every time I catch the bird clock chirping in I Bell Off to Lie, I will share it in this series. I did not see the spring that carried the blaster to the block. To the... Oh, okay. Every time I catch the bird clock chirping and I left the light, I will share it in this series. I did not see the spring that carried the blaster to block the path forward coming, and neither did Dave. Kind of tri tripped me up a little bit because block can be a noun or verb. In this case, it's a verb. But reading that the first time here, I was thinking noun. Oh, additionally, to block, or going to block, that's the verb, like, you know, going to do something, going to block, or to the block, yet block is a noun, and you're going to it, though sometimes you can remove the, remove the, and say going to block, so like, I am holding phone, and then I'm going to block. Right here, right now. I'm going to end the video right here, right now. Is that a dead meme? There are a few different songs by different people called Right Here, Right Now. And what I probably should have put in the script, but I haven't, is that I think I may have gotten right here, right now, from the Impossible Quiz. I really should put that in the script, but I'll do it later. So I think I will do that later. But for now, let's move on to part two. 
Bringing a POW block can't hurt. Uh, should I take a POW block with me? Yeah, it doesn't hurt, can't hurt. But I mean, if you wait too long and you have a fireball, whatever you guys call them, if it falls on your head, then that'll hurt. So, that can't hurt, but having a fireball fall on your head would hurt. That was a good one, right? You can't tell me that wasn't a good one, can you? Pack Valham, blind. What exactly does the bottom do? What these big plays are is making here. The when Dave doesn't see something obvious, he and or his Twitch chat says, DGR blind. This time, I didn't see something obvious, namely the activation of an on-off switch. Gets real now. That's what I think needs to do. Climb the vine, go in the pipe. That's what he's going to try. Climb the vine, go in the pipe. Hold me, I'm scared. Don't hit that. It took me almost seven minutes in this video to make a prediction and put yellow text on the screen. Cheap, cheap hit boxes. Uh -oh, uh -oh. We'll take a spiked meatball to the face, but how? How do? How? Can you go up all the cheap sheets are falling because the hitbox isn't- Mario's starting to get full on these meatballs. Am I safe here? Yes! This one is subtle, but I will give you a hint. It is about the yellow text. What can you find about the yellow text? Here is the answer. I have the right side of the top line aligned exactly with the right side of the cheap, cheap hit boxes, indicating that they are just outside of Mario's hit box in that narrow shaft. So like right at this line, cheap cheap hit boxes are, and just here, and Mario's just and here, they don't overlap, and so Mario would not get hit by the cheap cheeps. The get up. Dave said, that wasn't so bad, was it? That reminded me of the end of The Get Up by Blanco Brown. Do you see what I did with the yellow prediction text at 10.32? Oh. Top of the power block. Uh, and then get in the red pipe. Uh, I do with the pal, get rid of the muncher, get in the red pipe. Get in the do you see what I did with the yellow prediction text at 10.32? 5 and 8 bit since. Let's see, booger, that's a gross one. Juicy pear, I don't care for. Those actually come later, but I wanted to share the mouth sound that I made. At 11.43. Okay. We 
I played the drum roll from the beginning of Fife and Drum, and after revealing the bean flavor, I played a part of Takeover of the 8-Bit Synths, which starts nice and acoustic, but ends nasty and electronic. You have to watch... You have to watch the video to find out which I ate. I thought I wasn't supposed to show you guys here, but then I realized maybe you're... Maybe I put that there for those who are reading the document and not watching the video. Yeah, hard to tell which video I was t referring to. Okay, but either video. Okay. You have to watch the video to find out which I ate, for those reading the document. But you are watching this video, so yeah, you know which one I ate. I'm pretty sure I have done that on my YouTube channel before, but I do have a game on Scratch called Treat Town Tricky Traps with Fife and Drum and Take Over of the 8-Bit Synths. Treat Town is one of my many long-time unfinished Scratch projects. Which is a subset of my long-time unfinished anything. My many long-time unfinished Scratch projects, and it is supposed to be a version of Candyland with mini games. Tricky Traps is finished, inspired by Bean Boozled, and there is another Treat Town game inspired by Five Nights at Freddy's, which is also finished but may have some bugs in it. And being based on Five Nights at Freddy's might not be entirely appropriate for Scratch, which is for all ages. Oh, it's for all ages, so that includes kids, but not just kids. I mean, I have adequate, I think adequate, warnings on it. Another one of my unfinished scratch projects is similar to Five Nights at Freddy's, but... Remove all the horror. The core gameplay is there. You have to, you know, watch for characters and stuff. But it's not dark. It's not scary. It has fun music. Fun, happy music. And nothing scary about it at all. And so if you want the gameplay concept of Five Nights at Freddy's, but without anything scary, you could... Do that if I ever get that finished. Oh boy, I have a lot of unfinished anything, not just scratch projects. Of course, many scratch projects, but also lots of other things in my life I've started and not finished. Including right here on YouTube, and I am talking way too much now. Why dogs beg at the table? I know why dogs are always begging at the dinner table. They see you eating the good food. They want some of the good food. They're tired of that crappy old dog food. So, like, mystified at the attention to detail. <laughs> oh, what, what I just said reminds me of the Glozell baby food video. And Glozell, uh, she said she knows why he was always crying. It's that stuff he's giving them. This is where I'm going to have to end this video. I will show you the Glozell Green clip that I was reminded of after I said why dogs are always begging at the... Get begging. Get, get, I'm going to restart that. And then after I restart reading this, 
I will show you the Glozel green clip that I was reminded of after I said why dogs are always begging at the dinner table. But I'm begging. Now I know why babies cry. I have sympathy. But I'm babies now. That's disgusting. Oh my gosh, that's gross. None of this. Bad audio. I have to pause it right to show you the brief text in the. T I have to pause it right to show you the brief text in the top left corner. video. So you're telling me you didn't use the blue snowball? have to pause it right to show you the brief thing at the top left corner. But I apologize for the bad audio, and it's being left panned. I noticed my hair was getting long, but it kind of foreshadows what will come later in I Belove to Lie. Anyway, here it goes sometime. And I need to put the dishes away. Emptying the dishwasher is one of my household chores. Chance for glory. Can you hold up the chance for glory? How often does that work? When Dave goes in a hole, how often is it good? Imagine my hands are a pie chart. The area at the top represents when a hole that Dave goes down actually does have glory in it. There are a few times it worked, but mostly not. Also, do you like how I have the yellow text going down where I predicted Dave would go down? CP1? That very well may be checkpoint one. I can explain here what happened with the checkpoints, but I don't want to spoil it. It is explained later in the video, but is too closely related to the basic concept and isn't a joke or a shenanigan. Why am I mentioning it here, then? I feel like I want to mention every text I put on the screen, except for the yellow predictions that aren't significant enough. Wait, what? Wait, what? Huh. This looks familiar, don't it, doesn't it? Uh Wait, what? <laughs> That's exactly what Ryan said to me the other week. Ah, uh, okay. Checkpoint two? Wait. Can you just... Dave said, wait, what? Some time ago, Ryan had said that to our mother. We can't remember why, but I'm guessing it was a reaction to my mother dressing up for something, or maybe just wearing something specific. Seeing that this video was uploaded in May, it may have been for St. Patrick's Day. She did dress up for it in 2022, maybe also 2021, but I would have to confirm with her.
actually scrolling through her Facebook feed from back then, she didn't. And Ryan may have reacted to her mask. No, no, no! There were spikes, but there was an invisible block under them. There was another invisible block beside that one, and a lit bob arm, not a lit bob indicator from keep talking and nobody explodes, came out, blowing up both of those invisible blocks so that Dave can jump into the spikes and get out of this soft lock. Hold your horses! The bob arm also blew up a block to the right so that Dave could have gotten the second checkpoint instead of respawning at the first checkpoint, but he realized that too late. I mimicked Dave's no no no, but I was being too loud for my father, who went to bed early because he had to get up early for his shelf stocking job for Frito Lay. Gotcha covered. Actually, I was kind of thinking, I mean, the first time he got back here, um, I was kind of thinking now CP1, but I didn't understand. Your friendly, smiley robot is right next to us. We just can't see him. Dave realized that was CP1 right there, or more like left there. I mentioned what I had been thinking earlier, that might be CP1, but editor me. Dave realized that was CP1 right there, or more like left there. I mentioned what I, what I had been thinking earlier. I mentioned what I had been thinking earlier. That might be CP1, but Editor Me already got it covered, and that is why I mentioned it here earlier. I might as well tell you where CP2 is. It is off screen below the vine where the mushroom fell, and I had that yellow text going down predicting that Dave would go down there. Bird Clock Goodness Well, the bird clock and Dave saying, oh my goodness, lined up pretty perfectly here. Me. Me. Dave often makes silly sounds or stumbles upon his words, and I decided here to make a major triad with it. A triad is a three-note chord. I am not going to make this a music theory lesson. This becomes a recurring thing in I Will Have to Lie. Another chordification. Dave said, another sign it's a really good troll level for me is getting me to not speak coherently. I decided to quantify this incoherent speech, like I just did with the me. 
This time, though, it sounds diminished, like it has tritones. Editor me, I want you to test it right here, right now. Mr. Bean. The pun my intended. Uh, yeah, the pun. Bean. Ben. Yeah. Have you ever seen Mr. Bean? Check out his YouTube channel. It's very funny. Uh, do you remember me the movie theater? Just to be clear, of course the pun is intended. Back then, Ryan had Bean watching Mr. Bean, and I think he still does from time to time. One particular video I remembered was the cinema video, and one particular part was when Mr. Bean tapped his girlfriend's shoulder and then scared her. I got a haircut. I should shave. This is where that foreshadowing comes in. Can you see the difference between before and after? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna go shave. I can't see the shaving difference as well. Here. I can't see the shaving difference as well as the haircut difference. There's Mr. Happy Robot Face! Different. There's Mr. Happy Robot Face! <laughs> Nobody. Not a single soul. Absolutely no one. DGR. There's Mr. Happy Robot Face. <laughs> I found it funny when Dave said that, so I put the text on the screen. There's Mr. Happy Robot Face. I also referenced that nobody, not a single soul, meme. Well, that's it for part four of this video. It's long enough, so I'm just going to end it right here. I have nothing else to say, except you're welcome. If you are smart, click the like button. If you're a genius, click the subscribe button. You will see me next time, where I will do the same as I've done here with episode five, Level Fears. Okay, look, I can make it look like Ryan's headbanging. <laughs>